is the 20th anniversary of September 11th, 2001. communism, Marxism, and the any reference to the Nazis at all in terms of, well, COVID and the whole, uh, the whole bit that we're seeing currently. Now, I consider his sort of bleeding, if you will, bleeding like a little goat, uh, to be a bit much, because there's more there to, as I said before, than is currently uh, understood. A lot of people understand only the surface, and this is where I, we're here, you're going to get something more than the surface, you'll get more uh, of the significance of what's going on, uh, but the thing is you also get into the details. Uh, he doesn't want to get into the details. Uh, people have been watching him for a long time. I've been watching him for a long I've been watching him for five years. This is how I'm finally analyzing the analyst, and this, because I've been watching him for five years. He talks a lot about the Hegelian dialectic, but he really doesn't get into... He's getting into a little bit now about creating a fight. go out and fight for what you what you consider to be right. For your rights.
Gnosis is that you had to figure out not only when your sacrifice could be because they didn't have a calendar, you had to figure out by the motion of the stars what day it is, what time it is, and of course, you know, what type of sacrifice you're going to do. That's all dependent on these calculations. If you didn't have that information, you couldn't do the calculations, then you could do the them doing their duty. And what you want to do is you want to take a look at India. Because it's all there. 1.5 billion people, ancient society, it's been around for a very, very long time. history of India, or even India currently, you can sort of see 
uh, what people thought of it. You know, if you're... Consequences that begin, you know, in many ways, 
uh, before Dostoevsky, you could see the sort of the underpinnings, the sort of the reason for what was going to happen. You could see it starting to form at that particular point in time. And Dostoevsky writes about that they, 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 these people. And was basically, if you look back at where the timing is, it begins with Vol in many ways with, with, with Voltaire around the 1700s, and as the Roman Catholic Church began to lose its grip on power. See, up until about 1700 AD, the Roman Catholic Church had an absolute grip on power in uh, Europe. They were the power to be. And everyone sort of floated around the Vatican. And that was that. It wasn't until basically around 1700 that the Vatican began to lose its power. Then you see the sort of shift. If you go into the naval battles, you start seeing Spain lose and start seeing even the French really doesn't have, doesn't have the power that it pretends to have. And this is why Britain rules the sea. You have to rule Britannia. Well, this is, has to do with a fundamental, fundamental shift in power from the Catholics to the Protestants, particularly the British. So the, the British figure pretty prominently and pretty heavily into the factors that shifted within the, within the 1700s. And this is where you have Voltaire coming into everything. And as that world starts, starts to collapse, the Catholic world starts to collapse, you have the so-called modernist world uh, that sort of proceeded very shortly preceded the Victorian era. And the thing is, in the Victorian era, this is where you have Ford. Ford cuts his teeth on a large chunk of his work in the parties of the Victorian women in various different uh, villas and so on and, 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 and salons as he treated the wealthy women of society from their malaise. And this is where it gets a lot of his theories from. This, this, this is this is the way he cuts his teeth. This is all later on picked up by his nephew Edward Bernays and I think his daughter uh, Anna Freud. And it was disastrous, but the thing is, this disaster uh, really took a long time to unfold, and he, Anna Freud became the basis for the American dream. She's the one with FDR who created the American Dream. So the American Dream was never Christian, it was actually Anna Freud who began to realize that man, if not uh, properly tethered to some degree of morality, no matter how it was defined, would become very animalistic like we're seeing now. And so she, she with FDR, went into all the major schools and everything and created a program much like we see with the COVID program today, he convinced everybody what the American, American dream was, why everyone should have it. So she creates a condition. And amongst this condition was the factor that, that breeding was essential. But the breeding program did not come with or even start with Anna Ford. The breeding program came uh, came before then, about, uh, I think, the 1890 or somewhere, somewhere around that time period, 1890, around there, that around that time frame, that's where you begin seeing the discussion of breeding and how breeding was the sort of necessity. Who you married mattered. Otherwise, you would get idiots and morons in your family. And idiots and morons were not a term tossed about lightly because they had legal revenue. Ramification. If someone was, if you were found to be a moron or an idiot, or even feebly minded, you would lose everything. Uh, the, the whole thing is, to give you an example, the conservative ship in Bowman has the myth of Britain's fears. Not that she is classified as a person who can't handle, handle herself. She is classified as a person and a moron and must be taken care of. So what happens is that someone is given power over her estate because she cannot uh, handle the affairs. And this was true if you were a woman, if you were uh, deemed to be an idiot or a moron. Uh, women were a little more out had a form of, uh, of moronic 
And the Jews, the, the understanding of this, the understanding that most of Europe, for a large chunk of its history, was illiterate and couldn't read and write their own names. Well, who then did all the signing of the documents? Who created all the documents? Well, those were the Jews. The Jews were the bureaucracy of, 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 of Europe. They were the bureaucracy and the bank of the Vatican. You ask yourself, well, how did the, Rock, the, the Rothschilds get all their wealth and, and money? Because they were the bank of the Vatican. This is their lineage. And so they, in many cases, own or finance much of Europe. And it was also their religious ideas that passed through most of Europe, even though it was viewed as Christianity. The reality is it was not even Judaica, but rather it is Kabbalah. Kabbalah is the underlying points Of masonry, which that's the guild, guild is, is actually Gnostic, it's, it, it, it's a Gnostic thing, not actually, there, there is no religion called Mason, Masonic, there is no religion, it's Kabbalah. And it is a form of Gnosticism. And the Kabbalah, like, like most, and even most of rabbinical Judaism, has no official form because the, it is determined by the rabbi. The rabbi determines what is and isn't Jewish. And it's left up to the individual rabbi. It's not it's sort of a collective thing. And so what happened is the Jews became a very visible and convenient target for a lot of different things. Even though there were Jews behind the scene who were actually involved. And this is why I say you want to We'll take a look at where the swastika came from. You understand where the swastika came from, and then you now begin to understand that there's a lot more there than uh, uh, than simply, oh, Hitler was after the Jews. And the thing is, you see that, that, that what happens is that Hitler was the end point of a massive view of genetic engineering, social engineering. 